What's up, y'all? Welcome to Game Day with Heavy Cardboard, where we teach, play, and discuss medium and heavy strategy board games, war games, 18XX. Thank you, fillers. Today, featuring Blake Chronicles, Agent Decker, designed by Manuel Correa, and Matt Dembeck, who I noticed Matt's in the chat right now, so welcome. That's awesome. Published by Board and Dice, also currently in the chat with us. So welcome, everybody watching live around the world, as well as after the fact. I'm your host, Edward Euler. And today's a solo playthrough, so it's just you and me for game day. So we're just going to chill out, have some fun, see if we can beat the game, right? Right. Uh, but before we get started, big shout out to our 688 patrons that we have, and a special shout out to Anthony H. Without y'all's support, this ain't happening, so thank you. Along with that, we also want to give a big thank you to Board and Dice, who are sponsoring the playthrough, as well as provided us with the, and by us, I mean this guy, uh, with the prototype for this. Now, that said, this is currently on Kickstarter. Uh, it's a prototype, so keep that in mind when it comes to components, when it comes to rules, when it comes to artwork, all those things. It's a prototype, right? So keep that in mind. All that uh, is subject to change as the, the thing evolves. So if you have questions, like I said, Philip is here in chat. You can always ask him if there's anything in particular that you would like. And I see, actually... Uh, Iraq is also here. So awesome. Cool. So board and dice is well represented today. I appreciate it, fellas. So yeah, this should be fun. This will be my first ever solo live stream. Uh, and this will be fun. So it's going to be a collaborative effort in some regards between what you guys see and, and the choices I make. So hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to beat the game. So that said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to do the teaching a little bit different than what I normally do. Normally I would give all the rules and everything up front, but I think that the game is, it's going to benefit from learning as we go. I'll give an overview and give you an idea of what we're looking at, but because the game plays relatively quickly uh, in the way the actions take place, I think it makes sense to go ahead and do it that way. So you guys feel free as always, let me know if you have any questions, we'll be able to answer that. Uh, that said, um, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to bring the camera, the camera that's on me down as well as the chat for the overview at the beginning. And this is kind of a story driven game also at the beginning. So there's going to be a fair bit that I'm going to be reading as far as the prologue, as well as the first, uh, the, about the first stage and how this is all going to work. So just bear with me, enjoy, immerse yourself in the environment that is Blight Chronicles Agent Decker, and uh, yeah, let's do this, all right? Let's go. All right, so what you see here is the components. Again, keep in mind, this is a prototype. So these little markers that I have up here are actually just reminders for me. They're supposed to be little hexes with uh, numbers one on those two spots and two there, but they're just temporary little reminders for me, so I actually play the game correctly. So a full game of Blight Chronicles, Agent Decker, represents a single mission, and each mission is divided into seven stages, which kind of play out into mini-games. So you can see that there's going to be seven stages total. We're going to play one, maybe two of the stages today. We'll see how well it goes and, and well, whether or not we fail, and we'll go from there. During a stage, you're going to play cards from your hand to target obstacle cards, which are going to be out here as they come out, either to knock them out or to eliminate them. And when you eliminate them, they'll then go into your deck of cards. And these are my starting cards that start here, as, as you can see, David Decker starting cards. Every time that, that my deck is going to empty, reshuffle, create a new deck, carry on, so on and so forth, until 
ultimately, I'm able to either complete the objective, which is this here in white, or be a failure and, well, fail, all right? So that's how that's going to work. So this is a nonlinear storyline for each of the stages of a mission. So at the end of a stage, provided that I succeed, I'm going to flip this over, read all this, and then I have a decision to make on what way to go. You can, at the end of each stage, you can either save your game or you can continue playing. So again, there are seven stages, so it's likely you're not going to play all seven stages in one sitting. So there's a very simple way to be able to save your progress and pick it up again when you want to in the future. All right. So that said, let's go ahead and look at what, well, what you guys are looking at. All right. First and foremost, there are essentially four types of cards. There is the mission card, and we're playing the Cloudless Sky mission, which I should point out, if you have not seen the Paul Grogan rules video, his is very in-depth and very detailed, and to be honest with you, I used it to help prepare for my run-through or my playthrough today. So, we have the mission card, which, again, we're doing the Cloudless Sky mission, and we're doing the first stage of that. Then there's the stage card over here, and I'm gonna bring this over here so you guys can see that a little bit better. So the stage card here, it has a number of different points of information. You have the stage name and what it's called. You have the icons which show which obstacles you're gonna be fighting or, or that are going to be an impediment to you being able to complete your mission. Then there's a starting visibility right here which a starting visibility of one so our marker actually starts at a visibility of one then there is the special uh, setup rules which are right here which we will get to when we actually get to setting up our mission i'm going to walk you guys through that as well and then the objective shows well what's your goal so the objective here is we need to be able to get one objective marker and then discard six uh strength or six power if you will to be able to jump over the fence which that's how we get in that's the whole objective and it also shows a mission failure condition which shows if i reach a suspicion of 15 or more i fail we start out with a suspicion of zero so if at any point we reach 15 or higher and that goes up awfully high the game is over and i lose it's important to note also that this doesn't reset in between the different stages of the mission. So if we finish at 13, well, we're going to start stage two at 13, so on and so forth. Hopefully that makes sense, all right? So that is the stage card, okay? So there's that. Then there are the agent cards. So the agent cards say what the ability is, so that's basically flavor text. But it also is going to come into play for some of these other cards that are out here. So, for instance, this one says silent movement, but then it has a potential uh, special ability down here, uh, which says discard tension to lose to suspicion. So if I played the tension card, I could then discard the tension or discard it out of my hand, I should say, and uh, be able to remove to suspicion. Again, suspicion being this track out here. So there are two types of icons. There are two types of, I don't want to call them attacks per se, but there are two types of, uh, let me get the exact term. There are two types of, of costs that you can pay. There's physical and there's evasion. So the physical are the red triangles, as you can see up here, and the value there is how much physical there is, and then there is evasion, which are in the blue hexes. And that evasion is also what these little markers here symbolize that I have as just little reminders for myself. And last but not least, this also says when the card is available. So you can see that all these are my starting cards, but there are also, when I hit level two, there are other cards that are going to become available. And last but not least, there are going to be obstacle cards. So the obstacle cards are here in the obstacle deck, and it's a pretty, pretty extensive deck of cards. Now, this shows which obstacles are going to be in a given uh, stage of a mission. So there are three different types, so three different decks of cards that we're going to be taking part in, and I'm going to place them here so you, you guys can see. 
We'll move those out of the way, bring those in, and there we go. So we have three different types here. So there's a whole bunch of information on this. So it's important to note that the actual name of the obstacle is down here. It is not at the top. If you were to acquire these for your uh, agent deck, then these will come into play. So these are when you have them in your deck, but at, during the game when they are obstacles, essentially those are not coming into play. It's only this stuff down here. So it's the name of what it is. It's the icon here, which shows which set that's in. So you'll notice the surveillance camera. The surveillance camera also is shown here. So that's why that is in the deck or in this game. The type of obstacle, which is this little symbol here. So you can see these symbols may or may not come into play as we go along. The abilities of that obstacle, which there are more than three, but this says eliminate. So whenever I eliminate, then this is going to come into play. Reveal, meaning as soon as this is revealed, that's going to come into play. And this is a threat, which is kind of an ongoing uh, special ability, which is probably not going to be good for me in that case, all right? This is also the suspicion value. So if I do not avoid that card, when we get to that step, then my suspicion level is going to go up that amount. And again, a reminder, when we hit 15 on the suspicion level, game over, I lose for this specific stage of the mission. The triangle, or possibly the hex, or you'll see in some of these, in fact, all of these, have a triangle, a red triangle, with a blue hex behind it, which means that that is the cost to target the obstacle, and it can be targeted with either evasive and or physical uh, attack power, if you will. And yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it. And then this stuff will come into play as we go along as it adds to my deck. All right. So those are the different cards that are in the game. And now how do you play the game? Well, there's actually a pretty good player aid out here on the main board. So we have the round structure, which is what I'm going to be referencing throughout the game over here. Each round, and it's an indeterminate number of rounds, each round has five phases and they're real simple. So engage is going to be playing cards from my hand and then attacking possibly these obstacles or any of these uh, marks that are out here. So you'll see there's first mark, second mark, third mark. Well, in this case, the, the goal of this is to be able to get one objective star. Well, if you'll notice here, if you eliminate the guardhouse, that's the only way to get an objective star in this mission. So or in this stage, so I need to be able to get one of those and then I can discard six power to be able to jump over the fence. Well, I need to be able to eliminate that guardhouse. So that is step one of our mission here. So part of that will be or that will be taking place during the engage where I'm playing cards from my hand. The second thing I'm going to be doing is reorganizing, so drawing back up to my hand size. So my deck is going to start here, and my hand size, it says, is going to be four. So I will always have draw up to four. If I have four or more in my hand, then I won't be drawing cards. Then the next step is avoid. One of the obstacle cards is avoided, which is going to always be in slot one or slot two. That'll make sense as we go along. Then there's a move, which means all it's just on a conveyor, so anything that's avoided will come over to the avoided obstacle pile, and then all of the obstacles will conveyor down, and then, last but not least, we'll be look around, we'll reveal new obstacles, filling in right to left. Rinse and repeat until one of two things happens. Again, I've eliminated that to get the objective, and then I've discarded four during the next engage, or that engage step, or I reach suspicion level of 15. And that's how the game goes. So the details on all this, I think we'll go ahead and go through as cards come out and as it makes sense. So hopefully that works for y'all. That said, let's go ahead and set up the mission and then we'll actually read through the prologue and stage one. So if that works for you guys, let's go ahead and set up the mission. So the board's on the table, yada, yada, yada. We have the mission card. Uh, let's see. So we start at zero here. We start at one on visibility which shows here. Then it says place the guardhouse in the first mark, which we've already done. So now I need to go ahead and shuffle in these into the obstacle deck. All right, so let me do that. Oops. So 
So if you guys have any questions so far, and it's power. Thank you, Matt. I apologize for that. I keep wanting to call them strength, but it's power. All right, so here we go. So then we're going to shuffle the, uh, the obstacle cards, which I did, then place them. Uh, then we're going to deal them out. And, well, actually, technically, those will go there. The eight starting agent cards start in my agent deck. So I'll shuffle those up. All right, so those are shuffled. Now we need the six obstacles. So we'll start out in slot one. So this start, so it's a drone with a camera, which this has a reveal, and reveal says activated when an obstacle is placed up in sight. So here we go. If there is a surveillance camera in sight, gain one suspicion. In sight is any of these six slots. Well, right now there is not. Okay, so we don't have to worry about that. So now that no longer comes into pl play because it's already been revealed. So then we go to the second one. This is a staff entrance. There's nothing there. So, okay, we keep going. Number three, this has an eliminate one. Well, if I eliminate it, then it's going to come into play. Doesn't matter for right now. A nervous guard, nothing there. Good. Then we have a security guard has an eliminate. We don't need to worry about that. That's activated when the obstacle is eliminated. But unfortunately, we also got another security camera. So this is already activated. We don't need to worry about that. So here we go. It's another reveal. If there is another security camera with that symbol, the lightning bolt, which there is, increase your visibility by one. Well, okay, our visibility is already up to two. And I should point out, that when you get up to four, nothing happens, but when you would add another visibility, you're gonna gain one suspicion, which is going to ramp that up. There are ways to lower your visibility, but unless there's a, a, a trigger for that, it will stay wherever it is and it will only increase, all right? So hopefully that makes sense. So there's our six obstacles that are starting at, there is no after, there's a before, for special setup there's no after so we don't need to worry about that and then it says uh go ahead draw four cards for the agent deck so here we go we will go ahead there's one we have silent movement so it's a strength of i'm sorry yes a power of one and it says discard tension to lose two suspicion always nice to have another silent movement two this is a really really weak draw to start but there's tension which if I discard it to be able to get removed to suspicion. However, we start the game with no suspicion, so we don't really need that. But that's our starting hand, and now we're ready to... Uh... Oh, fair enough. All right, so let me go ahead and read through the prologue. So there's a couple of paragraphs here, so be patient, be understanding. Again, immerse yourself in the theme of this, and here we go. It's late Saturday evening and you're looking over the city from the top of one of those San Francisco skyscrapers. You notice your drink rippling from the loud bass and wonder why you attend this sort of event. It's not like you can allow yourself to make any permanent social connections. Then again, blade agents mustn't, attra mustn't attract attention, so going to parties from time to time is even encouraged. It's been a few years since you joined, but you're still a rookie in the agency's eyes. As you take another sip of water, your phone vibrates, and simultaneously, there is movement in your peripheral vision. Hey there. It might have been the start of a fun night, or it might have been a bust. There's no way to know. You, pre you pretend that you didn't notice the approach and take the call. An agent always takes the call. As you bring your phone to, the, to your ear, it triggers the retinal projector in your right eye. A close observer would see a small orange circle appear around your pupil. You pretend to listen as the real message appears in the form of a hologram. Blight sight allows for improved and secure communication, and every agent gets it when they join the project. The message reads, Hello, agent. I am Monica from Blight, and I will be your handler for this mission. Code name: Cloudless Sky. Two hours ago, we lost track of Dr. Andrews, a well-known chemist categorized as high risk because he has the knowledge to create dangerous chemical weapons. He is skilled enough to make a D4 class bomb. Alongside the text briefing, the hologram shows images of Dr. Andrews, the high-risk list, and a simulation of the effect of a D4 bomb. The dispersion radius is almost 500 kilometers in diameter, 
capable of covering more than half the state of California. We've never noticed anything suspicious about the doctor, but that is a secondary issue when the potential threat is as serious. We need one of our agents to go to the area where he was last seen. You take a sip of water as you look around the sunset skyline, and the view is blocked by a map and a satellite image of a pier. Blade is aware that your skills are still under development, and we wouldn't normally risk sending a junior agent on a mission like this, but we have no choice because you're the only one close enough to the facility. You need to evaluate the potential danger and, if necessary, rescue Andrews. Remember, Agent, if, you're, if you decide to accept the mission and you're compromised, the government will disavow any knowledge of your actions and you will be on your own. What is your response, Agent? You read the text the second time, feeling a combination of excitement and fear, but eventually you tap the asterisk key on your phone. The holographic projection disappears and you're again looking at the sunset. After a few seconds, you get a, good new, me you get a new message. Thank you. There will be a car waiting for you out front of the building. Contact us through coded channels when you're there. Your eye deactivates and you take one last glance at the city before you move towards the exit. And now we move into stage one, the introduction, AKA baby steps. A drink of water in the meantime. All right. Here we go. Stage one introduction, baby steps. The driver drops you on top of a low hill overlooking the target where you review the layout and plan your next move. After checking that you were alone, you open the front, you open the front of your watch and remove an earpiece. When you fit it into your right ear, your eye glows again. You speak softly. I'm here and I'm ready for further information. As you scan the area, your earpiece confirms we can see what you see. There are guards roaming around the fence, but they shouldn't be a problem for you. Unfortunately, there's no information about the internal layout of the buildings anywhere on the open network. So what you're saying is that I need to scout the area before I take action. That might be the best idea. There's a guard house nearby. Try to get inside it before you go over the fence. With luck, you might find plans to scan for us and maybe some helpful tools. I'll contact you when I get inside. You take out the earpiece and place it back inside your watch. From your vantage point, you notice that someone is approaching the facility, so you start down the hill towards him. You might be able to pass unnoticed if you had his uniform. He's bulky, but the jacket and the baseball hat should fit you perfectly. You speed up to intercept him before he reaches the guardhouse and, revealing glare, and the revealing glare of the security lights. You are still in shadow when you get to him, perfect for a silent takedown and only at the last moment does he see you. You quickly get an arm around his neck and apply pressure until he loses consciousness. When he stops moving, you drag him off the road and take his jacket and baseball hat. You check his wallet. His name's Mike, and according to the sticker note inside the wallet, he has an appointment with Jake Higgins this evening. Feeling confident with your disguise, you move closer to the facility while memorizing the location of the guards and the surveillance devices around the fence. Maybe it'd be easier to sneak in closer from the parking lot? As you approach, however, you're spotted by one of the guards who waves you forward. You don't have much choice but to see what he wants. You decide to make the first move. Hey, nice evening. Keep it casual. Forget that. What are you doing here? This is a restricted area. I have an appointment, but I'm not really sure where I should go. Janitor or guard gig? Do I look like a janitor? Do I look like I care? Well, I'm supposed to meet Jake Higgins. You can tell me where he is. He looks in your eyes for a moment while without speaking, then he finally responds. What was your name again? As he finishes the sentence, you dart forward. Three quick and precise strikes. Make sure he's out for at least a couple of hours. You grab him before he falls down and you whisper, I never gave you my name. You hold him. You hold him up and carry him out of view with the, of the cameras. Just two people walking together. He was suspicious and will be able to describe you when he recovers. With a rush of adrenaline, you realize that the clock is ticking. You can't stay outside much longer and delay, and delay increases the risk that someone will be able to identify you once you're inside. You have to get into the guardhouse as soon as possible. All right, so there we go. 
that's the premise of what it is that we're going to be doing. So here we go, all right? So first and foremost, now we have our four cards that are in hand. So we have silent movement, two of those, which are two evasive, and we have two physical, all right? Plus we have tension, which allows us to draw another card. So the other things that we're looking at is what is it going to cost to be able to defeat any of these obstacles? So this one's going to cost us three mixed, six mixed, two physical, plus one evasive. This is going to add to the cost to, the, to either eliminate or to knock out the obstacles. Here, again, it's three and one, four and two, four and two. So these will take six, that'll take four, that'll take three, that'll take three, that'll take six. Well, again, going back to this, we have a total of four right now. We could gain two suspicion to draw a card. I don't really see the need for it, though. And we don't need to discard tension to be able to lower any suspicion since our suspicion is at zero. So we have a total of four here. We have a total of three here to be able to knock that or to take that out. And I think that's kind of what we do since we don't have enough here and we don't have enough to be able to do anything else stronger. So that said, I think because it's combined or any mix, we'll go ahead and play a punch for one. We will go ahead and play silent movement for a total of two. And we'll go ahead and play silent movement for a total of three. Now, I could play the fourth card tension if I want to, but you know, let's go ahead and hold off to do that. So we'll hold on to tension. So we have a total of three power. Well, we have a choice now. So we have enough to take that down. So we can either take it out or knock it out, if you will, or eliminate it, all right? So those are our two options. So, if we eliminate it, we then put it into our agent discard pile, which it becomes part of our deck. So that means that it, we gain a suspicion to sidestep a card. Sidestepping is to avoid an obstacle there. That's actually kind of nice, but the problem with that is then this is going to be left face up, which means we're going to take two suspicion at the end, when, when we get there towards the end of the, the next step of the, of the uh, round. But the idea of gaining the suspicion to sidestep side step a card is nice because this way we would only take one as opposed to two or possibly three. Or we can avoid it altogether and just go ahead and knock it, uh, not eliminate it, I'm sorry, the, to knock it out. Take it down. There you go. Knock out a card. Woo! Easy for me to say. So we're going to choose to knock this out, which knocking it out means... We have a total of three power, so we're just going to turn it face over, and that's used up my cards. So my cards now come to the discard. That's the end of the engage phase. Next, reorganize. Draw back up to my hand size. Remember, I had one card left over, so there's one. We're going to draw three more. There, foot sweep. I can discard one power to be able to gain two power. Nip up. Prepare one card. Prepare is being able to go through my discard pile and add one of the discard pile back onto the top of my deck for the next round. That's always nice. And an elbow strike. So we have a total of six power looking for the next turn or next round. So that's reorganized. Then avoid one of the two obstacle cards that are potential or that are in the near area for the obstacles. So there are two obstacles here. One is knocked out. Or one, hmm. one is face up, one is face down. The face up one, if there are no cards in there, then we just avoid this whole step. But there are cards there. So because one is face up and one is face down, then I can choose which one is avoided. Well, if I choose to avoid this one, I take no suspicion, but this card stays there. If I choose to avoid this one, then I'm going to take the two suspicion, but both the cards will be wiped, and then these two will move down there later. But I think the idea here is to be able to avoid that one. It does not give you any... Uh, uh, you don't have to increase your suspicion because there's nothing on it, but this card will stay there. So that is avoiding the obstacle, then moving. So these conveyor down. 
And last but not least, look around, reveal a new obstacle card, which this one is an eliminate, so it doesn't come into play right now. That's the end of the round. That's the end of the first round. So we still have no suspicion, but we still have not done any of what it is that we're doing or the, what our goals are, as it were. All right? Cool. So there we go. So now we begin a new round. So engage, play cards from my hand. So again, going back to this, those are our cards. So we could discard one of the ones. So I could discard this. Uh, I could play that to gain two suspicion to draw another card, which right now we're at six. If we were to draw another two value card, that might allow us to knock out the guardhouse super early for two suspicion. I think that might not be a terrible idea, really. And this would allow us to... Ooh, what if we played nip up first? Ah, so here's what I'm thinking. If we played nip up first, we would be able to prepare a card first, which then means I could then choose one of these three cards to then be able to put it on the top of my deck and then gain two suspicion to draw it. Unfortunately, there are no two value cards. So it doesn't make sense to play that first. So instead, we'll go ahead and play tension. We'll gain two suspicion and draw a card and hope that it's a two value card. And I'll be honest, I can't remember. Nope, it's only a one, unfortunately. So, so we have one power out there already, one physical power. So we have a total of seven, although we could discard this, which gives that three, four, five, six, seven, plus eight. So here we go. We'll play foot suite out here, which says discard one power to gain two power. So I'll discard punch. So that's now a total of three, four, five, six. I may choose to prepare a card if I wish. And all of these I'm going to draw anyways. Sure, we'll go ahead and throw a silent movement to the top of my deck. All right. And eight. So two, four, five, six, seven. There's eight total. And it's combined. You must, to be able to eliminate, in the marks you can only eliminate, you cannot knock out, you must have a minimum of one physical, which I do have at least one physical. So you know what? Let's go ahead and eliminate that. Let's take care of this. So we eliminate this, which... This now would normally go into my deck. However, because now it's a tool, so let me show you guys this. Because it has this hand symbol on it, this says that as soon as you get it into your deck, immediately, instead of placing it into your discard, you can then place it into one of the three areas that you have down here for either uh, a tool or for an outfit. Well, obviously, that matches that symbol, that is a tool, and this is kind of an ongoing special ability that I'm going to have. Remember, once this is eliminated, that part of the card no longer matters. It's only this part that matters. So, you know what? I like that idea, so let's go ahead and do that. So we'll put that in play. I gain one evasive, so I'm at plus one evasive every round. Awesome, good deal. So there's that, and we gained that. That's the fastest I've ever been able to do that in two rounds. That's pretty strong. We may play two rounds, or we may play two stages today then. So all of these then go into my discard and now draw back up to my hand size. So my hand size is four. There's only one here, so I'm going to draw that one. But now to be able to draw more, I need to be able to shuffle my discards. Whenever you have to uh, shuffle your agent deck, whoop, your visibility moves up one. So we'll shuffle this up, and we'll go two, three, four. The rest of those will hang out there. So we have silent movement. Now we're hoping for at least a total of five. And oh, hey, look at that. That's a total of five power. So there's a really good chance that we're going to win this game, or at least this stage. For what it's worth, earlier today, when I played one uh, in final prep for this, I failed. So it does mix, all right? Cool, so we drew back up to our hand. Now we have to avoid one of the obstacles. Well, there are cards in both slots. So 
slot number one takes precedent, so we're going to avoid this one. However, we're going to add that much suspicion. So we take two suspicion there, right? So this is then avoided. So it goes to the avoided obstacle. And then step four is they move closer. So these convey are over. We reveal that. That's another eliminate. Good to go. All right. Now it's a new round. So we go into the engage. Hey, Paul. The aforementioned excellent rules video, if you guys have not checked out, Paul Grogan, Gaming Rules, here in chat. What's up? All right. So we have already uh, claimed the objective marker. Now we need to discard a total of six power to be able to jump over the fence and complete this. This happens during the engage phase. And wouldn't you know, remember, we have one evasive power already to begin with. So there's one, there's two, there's three, four, five, and that's six. Oh, don't mind if we do. Although, technically, I, I don't know if you, can, you can't discard that, so hold on. I need to be able to discard a one here to be able to get two more power. So two, three, four, five, six. There we go. Exactly, Matt just, uh, I, I just beat Matt on that for the chat where he said you need to be able to discard six in hand. So we can do that. So we will discard this. So that will go into the discard. So now we have a total of three power. So there's three, there's four, there's five, that's six discard. All right. So unless Matt corrects me, that should be six. And if that is, then six, boom, we jump over the fence and we are home free. So I'll wait for Matt to correct me and see if I'm wrong or whether or not I'm gaming that or whether or not that's legit. Yeah, we're gonna have to play the second stage just to be able to show everything in the game. I. No, all right. Matt says I can't. I guess I'm. he says I'm gaming it. Boo. All right. So it's got to be actual six, and it can't be game like that, I guess. All right, fine. All right. So if that's the case, then we continue on. All right. Every ability can be triggered only when it's played. Oh, and then you won't have it to discard. You know what? You're right. So I, what he's saying is I would have to play that. I would then have to discard this, and that would give me three, but then I can't discard that because it's already been played. Fair point, fair point. All right, so that said, boo. So we have a total right now. We have one, two, three, four, five, and don't forget, we have this one for six. So we have a total of six power out here. So we could eliminate this or take down the knock out this guard. We cannot the surveillance station because that's going to be a total of seven don't forget there's two extra here and so we have five we have five we have three and we have two so what do we do ah i like the idea of being able to get a value two into our hand to be able to make our deck a little bit stronger so if that's the case we need a total of five power played so Okay, we need a total of five power. Or two, three, four, five. Nope. Mm. Nope, we're, we're not going to take a risk. What I was thinking was we could gain two more suspicion to draw a card, and we may end up drawing a two. But let's go ahead and help ourselves out a little bit. So we need a total of five power. So we can go play that. That'll be... A total of two. You know what? We'll just play it all. I'm good with that to be able to do so to get the five power that we need. So that's going to be one. We're not going to do that. That's three. That's four. And I forgot I have that. That's going to be a total of five power. So the five mix there is at least one physical so we can eliminate that and we will so this is actually going to go into our discard there so now that's going to be a part of our deck going forward all right 
So we're done with that, which means we are keeping this in our hand to be able to draw another card, which hopefully will help us out for next round to be able to finish the objective. So those will go into the discard. Then we need to draw back up to our hand size. So that's going to be a total of three more cards since we kept one in hand. So what do we got? So, yeah, we can do it this way. There we go. So right now we have a total of five in our hand. So again, we could hope that we could dis uh, gain, play this and gain two suspicion next turn to gain a card to draw a card to then be able to give us six total. Yeah, it's risky, but we'll see how it goes. So we drew back up to our hand. Now we have to defeat one of the ob or avoid one of the obstacles. Well, there are two face up, so we always have to go with slot one. So that means we're going to gain two suspicion there. That is avoided, that goes there, and they conveyor over, and refill. All right, so another surveillance camera. So if there is another surveillance camera out there when that's revealed, it is not. And uh, I believe it was um, uh, Philip that said that it has to be the exact name, not just the symbol, so that's good. All right, and now we have a surveillance operator, which has a threat. So the threat says when another camera is avoided, meaning down here during the avoidance step, then increase your visibility by one. So we're going to put that on there as a reminder that there is a threat out there. And now every time that we avoid a camera that's down here, it's going to raise our visibility, which once it gets up to four and then it pings again, it's going to keep upping our suspicion, which makes it tougher and tougher to avoid. So there's that. Now we go into a new round, all right? Well, what do we wanna do? So the question is whether or not this is a two value card or not. And ah, I'm scared to take the chance. I mean, we're allowed to go through our discards at any time. And the distribution, I, can't, I don't have it memorized. So there are two and two. Obviously, this one is from the obstacle deck, but our starting cards are right here, right? There's these three, and then there are these. And I want to say it's going to be a one-value card looking at that, so I'm not going to take that special ability. I believe it's a one-value card, so I'm not going to use that special ability to gain the suspicion for a one value card because that doesn't help us. We need to be able to discard a total of six power to finish, complete the mission or complete the stage of the mission. We can, however, prepare one card by playing that to make sure that we guarantee ourselves a two value card for the next turn. We could also discard tension to drop to suspicion, which, you know what, that's not a bad idea. So we have a total of five here, plus we have this one which makes six, but it's not discardable. Ugh, oh, what do we do, what do we do, what do we do? I like the idea of being able to take her down so that she doesn't give us the two suspicion. So here is what I think we do. We'll go ahead and play silent movement. When that happens, you can choose to do what that says. And I will discard tension to remove two suspicion. So we'll drop that back down to four. We need a total of three. Mm. I just realized it's not combined. So we're not going to be able to take her out. So instead, we're going to go for the security guard here, which is four combined power. Because that's going to be one. That's two, three. Now we can prepare a card, which looking at this, we'll go ahead and put the clear path in there. Oh, I just realized what I should have done, but it's a solo game, so I'm not going to do any mulligans. Uh, so there's that. And there we go. So that's three. We're going to just get rid of that because it's a useless card for us. It's kind of filler card. So there's going to be three and that'll be four. This is all evasive that we're using. We could use that, but it doesn't matter. It's combined. We'll go ahead, take the, him down, and done. So these will get discarded there, and now draw back up to our hand. So that's going to be 
two, and then we shuffle again. Oh, we're shuffling, which means our visibility is going to go up one more step. Three, four. Let's see if we draw well. Oops. Nope. Not a good draw. All right. Here we go again. So now we have to avoid one. Well, it's our choice, so we'll go ahead and not take any suspicion, and then we will convey them over. And now, didn't the threat, remember, is whenever you avoid a camera, which we did not do, we don't take any visibility there, so that'll be there. There's another threat. This says, when another guard is avoided, gain one suspicion. So if, if we avoid the guard, this symbol, we're going to gain a suspicion. Yeesh. And he's all, both of them are awfully strong. That's unfortunate. <sighs> all right. So here's a question for Matt or Iraq. So when you avoid, if you take down, and when you take down, uh, you you place it under the avoided obstacles, which means if that is uh, taken down and avoided that way, this would not trigger that because it's face down, I believe. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong on that. So, all right, so a new round. So what do we got? We have that guard. We have a total of five here, five, five, eight, and eight. Yeah, those aren't happening anytime soon because if those could, we could then beat the mission and we would just rather do that. So we have a total of three, four, five. The icon doesn't matter, Matt says, so that's right. All right. <sighs> we could, again, play this to gain two suspicion to then hopefully, you know what, let's go ahead and roll the dice, so to speak. So we'll gain two suspicion to draw a card. And hopefully we draw a two value. Ugh. Hashtag draw better. Not good. <sighs> All right. So unfortunately, we now have a total of five. But the good news is we're getting the ones out of the way. So that means the rest of our deck should be uh, a fair bit stronger that's left. So I'm looking at this, and I would like to avoid this nervous guard because she's going to give us two suspicion if we don't. So we need a total of three physical strength. Again, we have... One already played, we have two, and we have three physical strength played, which is good enough for her. But we also can go ahead and play Silent Movement just to get rid of it, even though we don't need to because it's a, a one value card. We have four cards left, and I think the chances of two of those being twos are pretty good. So we're going to keep the Clear Path card in our hand, and we'll go ahead and play those. And instead of eliminating her, uh, because then we would take one suspicion for the surveillance station, I think we just take her down. So we have that, and now we redraw. These will get discarded. And let's see if we draw well. So we already have the clear path for two, nip up, which allows us to uh, prepare another curve from the discard, so that's always nice. So, looks like we're going to have a total of six no matter what, because as long as we had two twos, we're in good shape. So we have that. Oh, look at that. Boom. So we're, we're going to be able to complete it. Yay. But we got to finish this round. So, we have to avoid that card. No harm, no foul. We roll these over. and staff entrance and nothing happens. So it becomes a new round, which is engage. So we can now discard up to six, or at least six mixed power. So there's six, boom. Discarded, stage one is complete, we got in. Awesome. All right, so I have yet to read this because I'll be honest, three times playing it, I've yet to beat this. So here we go. I don't know if that says a lot about me or way little, or a lot about the game or way little about me. So here we go. Let's go ahead and read what stage one says. Here we go. Get in. 
You land softly behind the fence with your recently acquired night vision binoculars. In your peripheral vision, your blight sight informs you that there is some useful information for you. Once again, you place the transmitter in your ear. I have the security headquarters to my left and a big building with the surveillance control room on my right. There are many containers between the two going all the way to the end of the pier. That means you could find out some information from the guards and possibly get a uniform and make sure that you can blend in. On the other hand, the surveillance camera feed could help you locate Andrews faster. As far as we know, he could be anywhere in the complex. Blight's leaving the decision to you, which means I'm going to leave the decision to y'all. You can end the call and decide to head towards the guard's headquarter or the surveillance building. What's it going to be? Do we go to the guard's headquarters to try and uh, get some more information, possibly get a uniform, or do we just go to the surveillance building, and try, which obviously is going to be harder, and try and find out where Andrews is quicker? So I'll leave it up to y'all. So Chela asks, can you not discard the other evasive card to diminish suspicion. So, the other evasive card. So, these were the four cards that I had, and while you guys are deciding. So, if I discard this, it says discard tension to lose two suspicion. Unfortunately, I didn't have tension to be able to discard, so that wouldn't have applied. So, hopefully that makes sense. Okay? There we go. All right. So, let's see. Jeff says HQ, so we got HQ or surveillance, y'all. What are we going to choose? Amanda says get a uniform, so so far we're two for the HQ. I'm, I'm Matt, Eric, what, Philip, what do you guys think? There's a bunch of y'all watching, so help me out. Voris says uh, go to the surveillance. Matt says the HQ. So far it's 3-1. First one to five gets it. That's four for, that's four and three. All right. Is there a beer option? <laughs> <coughs> don't hey, don't make me laugh. I'm uh, still getting over my cold. All right. Well, we're going to go HQ. So this now gives us direction on what to do. It says, read the stage introduction, unfortunate, in the mission book on page three and take the stage card for 2A, blend in. All right. Cool. All right. So here we go. So page three, let's see. And this is going to be stage 2A. Thankfully, printed this one. All right. And then we need the stage 2A blend in. All right. So we're going to do this in order. All right. You ready for this? Here we go. Unfortunate. Boy, they look angry. You decide to search the security headquarters in hope of finding something more suitable to wear while moving around the facility. According to the plans you scan, the building has several entrances. You pick the one that you think shouldn't have any guards around. You approach quickly and open the doors, trying to stay out of sight of the single camera overlooking the entrance. There's a reception desk in the, uh, at the front doors with, with a hallway beyond, but there's no one around. You close the doors, and as you start walking down the hall, one of the guards emerges from a bathroom ahead of you. He looks your way, smiles when he sees your jacket, and says, There you are, Mike. I was wondering if you were going to see your sorry ass in here after all. Then your eyes meet, and he quickly realizes that you are not, in fact, Mike at all, or after all. What the hell? Who the hell are you, and what'd you, where'd you get that jacket? He's going to create a disturbance in a moment. It's too late to try and calm him down. As you move closer to him, he pulls out something from behind his back. He swings a blade that misses you by a few inches. He pulls his arm back to stab you, but he's not fast enough. 
as he lunges, you punch him twice using your own momentum against him, using his own momentum against him. He drops to his knees, gagging. You hear the scuffle of feet coming from the hallway behind you. You take the combat knife from the guard on the ground and smash his face twice with the handle. He drops unconscious, bleeding. The other guard pulls out a gun. No time to think. You throw the knife at him and it sinks into his chest. He drops to his knees with the gun still in his hand. But just when you thought it was over, he manages to grab the fire alarm handle on the wall. The alarm goes off and now you need to do something really fast. So you run towards him, grab his body and throw it on the desk in front of the doors. You take a deep breath, smear the unconscious blood, guard's blood on your, over your face, rip open the jacket you're wearing to make it seem like you were in a fight as well. You slump against the wall below the fire alarm and grab the handle just as some guards run inside. They're shocked at first, then after a few seconds one of them moves straight towards you, grabs you by the collar and pulls you up from the, scar from the floor and screams, Okay, now explain to me who the hell you are and what the hell happened over here. You do your best to sound frightened. Um... I'm from the appoint. I'm here for an appointment with Jake over there. When I came in, I saw some guy stabbing him. I went to help him, but I got knocked out. When I came to, the guy was gone. I don't really know what else to do, so I pulled the alarm. Your interrogator looks at you long and hard. I got a feeling you won't be able to tell me what my what this mysterious guy looks like. What? Uh, what's that supposed to mean? Anyway, medium height, dark hair, pale skin. All right, let's pretend I believe you. Hey, you two. He turns and points to two guards close by. Sarah, call 911. Something's up. Sorry. Call, Sarah, call 911 and report this. Mark, go outside and let our friends know something's up. As for you, he turns back to you and gets real close. Don't go too far. I'll find out what really happened over here. And when I do, there's going to be more questions. Well, this doesn't look too good. You need to change your clothes as soon as possible and find a way to stop the senior guard before he makes too much trouble. All right. So that said, we start stage two, blend in. So our starting visibility is all the way pegged out at four. And now you're going to see the different symbols that we have to do for the different decks. So you need to go ahead and reset all of this. So are you guys able to follow along with all this so far? We gather all these up. Now, it's important to note that anything that is still in your discard or in your hand is now part of your hand. So that security camera that we got earlier, that stays in there. All right? There we go. So that stays in there, as do all the other cards. Okay? Unless there was something dropped, which would be out of the game. So, but we did not run into that. And... Our night vision binoculars also are in our hand, in our starting deck to begin with. But when we start our deck, we're allowed 8 to, I believe it's 21 cards. So if we look at this, let's take a look. We're going to keep that one for sure. We're going to keep that one for sure. I like the idea of keeping the two. If we're going to keep the silent movements... I think we get rid of the two punches because those are kind of eh. But the problem with that is the tension, if we use it to discard to lower our suspicion, that only gives us a total of two physical strength. And then there. Do we keep one of the ones here? I don't know. What do you all think? Because that would be, oh, you know what? We have to. That would be a total of eight. I think we do. I think that and we discard the punch, the other punch. And we don't include that in our deck. All right. All right, so let's see. Cameras rarely pull guns on you. Yeah, right. Uh, both ways would have been tough. I For sure. For sure would have been tough. All right. Uh, let's see here. Make sure I'm... Now we need to also separate these guys. So there are three decks to start with that we had from the last, uh, the last stage. I know this doesn't make the most exciting TV. I apologize, but... Talk amongst yourselves. There and there. So, looking at this, the guards stay in, but then we have the uh, the tools and the uh, light symbol. So, those are out. Those are out. So, there go the cameras. And instead, we bring in those 
and we bring in, uh, let's see, hold on, make sure I'm, so we have those, all of those, and that's it. Okay. All right, so it says beforehand, place the angry guard in slot six. So the angry guard comes in. Let's see, is, oh, that would be the angry guard. So the angry guard is going to go into slot six. Wow, he's strong and really angry. And the oversight symbol here says activated when the obstacle is moved to the avoided obstacle pile. So if he ends up there, that triggers, which says the mission is failed. So he can never make it here. No pressure. No pressure at all. And good call. Uh, Matt also brings up the fact that we get to add in level two. So Matt, do we get to level up with all of those cards or just one of them? Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. You can start with the tools uh, in play, if you wish. And there we go. All right. So we have three level twos here. So we have anticipation, gain a suspicion to prepare two cards, which means from your discard. That's always nice. And if punch is in the play area, draw a card. Yeah. There's a reason to keep the punch in there, huh? I think we still only keep the one punch. And surprise attack says if silent movement, yep, it's only one of them, that's what I thought. If silent movement is in play area, decrease your visibility by one. And it's a two. Wow, that's really good. All of these are good. Damn you guys, this is a tough call. So you know what, I'll leave it up to the peanut gallery to choose which surprise attack, right hook, or anticipation, which means we could, in theory, get rid of the punch because we start with eight. And right there, that's seven. So this would be our eight. We could start with more, but again, every time that we have to reshuffle our deck, remember that our visibility is going to go up uh, and it's going to add a suspicion because our visibility starts at four. So ugh, choices, choices. So on that note, let's see. That's part of our deck. We're good there. Making sure, okay, so all the guards, all the tool symbol, and these all get shuffled up, okay? Discard all equipped tools. I hadn't gotten there yet. Boy, that's disappointing. So, discard all equipped tools. So that means discard, this will go into my discard pile to begin with beforehand. So, Drop those down. Oh, good call. There is still a card there. Good call. Thank you. So there we go. So those are our available options. I'll let you guys help me out with this. And let me get the other punch as well. So these three, we can choose one of these three in any mix of all the others. So what do you all think? While I shuffle these up real quick, I'm just going to... Scramble them. That is not working real well one-handed. Trying to stay out of y'all's way so you can read. There we go. Let's go there. So right hook, right, right hook we got so far, and we got one anticipation. I'm leaning either, see, in... The thing is with the right hook is the punch, it allows us to draw a card, which is really nice, but it requires us to, in theory, keep two one value cards in there, which ugh, that's, that's what I'm kind of apprehensive about. Surprise attack is nice because the silent movement, then a lot, uh, we keep the tension in there and it allows us to decrease our visibility, which in theory allows us to remove suspicion. Choices, choices. Um, you know what? We'll go right hook. Let's keep it, let's try it. So that means these guys are out. We're at a minimum of eight, right? 
including that, even though it's going to get discarded. So we have a total of five, 10, we have 11 cards, all right? So even though this gets discarded, we still could play it to where it'll give us one each round. I think we still put it in here, all right? Uh, so we're keeping that, that's two, that's three, four, five. Now we're keeping the punches. Six, seven. I think we get rid of the foot sweep since we're going to use the punch cards to be able to then be able to use the right hook. Yeah, I say we get rid of that. So we're at three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what? I'm cool with keeping all those except for the foot sweep. Let's try it, okay? What's up, Pete? Welcome. All right, so that's going to be our starter deck, but we have to remove or discard. Hmm. So that starts in our discard. We'll shuffle these up. All right. So here we go. So we're actually down on stage two. It says level up, choose one level two card. If I would read the damn card, it would have said. So our objective, we need two objective stars. And it says discard four evasive to leave the building once we have two objective st stars. This is how we're going to fail, potentially. Suspicion of 50 or more. We're in good shape right now. This condition lasts until the end of stage four Bravo. Wow. So stage two, stage three, and stage four, got to stay below 50. And if the angry guard oversight ability is activated, and that's activated uh, when he gets here. So that would, that would stink. That would not be good. So we're going to draw four cards to start. One, two, three, and four. Nip up is going to allow us to prepare a card and the night vision binoculars start there. So that's that's kind of useful, all right? So we're gonna shuffle up the obstacle deck and here we go. Let's, I'm, these will be new to me as well. So here we go. Well, okay, not all of them. So security guard, nothing there. That's just a, uh, that's when he's eliminated. A metal sensor gate, again, when eliminated. Same thing, another metal sensor gate. Okay, a guard outfit. So this is the first outfit that we've seen. So the outfit says, when you acquire this, if you do so, but notice how strong it is, how hard, get one evasive every round to use against people, against any of those symbols. Okay, cool. And oversight is when it's placed in the discard, place in, uh, this obstacle in the second mark. Second mark would then go there. Uh, all right. And when it's eliminated, gain an objective. Really nice. And we need two objectives. So that's how we're going to get one of them at least. And then the last one, just the nervous guard. All right. Not a horrible start, I don't think. Okay, cool. So here we go. So we start again, remember, we start wherever our suspicion was and our visibility per this starts at four. So we need two objectives. So we need this, which is going to be right now a total of eight. And we start with a total of six. All right. Well, we can prepare a card if we play nip up. So you know what? We will. And we'll go ahead and put that in so that this is going to give us uh, a plus one evasive every round. So that's for sure. So there's two. So this gains us a suspicion, but it allows us to draw a card if we take that risky step one, if we defeat that. The expandable baton is just a two value card, which is not terrible, right? This increases our visibility when we eliminate it though, which means, boop, we're gonna get one suspicion. And this one says, if there is a guard in sight, meaning anywhere out here, uh, gain one suspicion. 
So either way, and honestly, I'd rather gain the suspicion to be able to draw the extra card. Or, hmm, I don't know. Do we go the expandable baton? That's just a solid two. I, you know what? I think we do. I think we go that route. So that's going to be a total of two. That's going to be a total of four. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of... Are we? We do that there. One, four. No, nah, we're going to keep... Ah, we'll get rid of one of the punches to be able to just get rid of it. Plus, this way we can eliminate the guard, meaning we can then acquire him into our discard pile. So we will keep one punch in our deck hope or in our hand, hoping that one of the three that we draw is the card that allows us to actually use that uh, to our ability or use that special ability that uses the, uh, the punch card. So, okay. So we have that. We have enough to eliminate the guard. So the guard will then go in there and we will go ahead and discard those, which means we go ahead and draw back up to our hand. Or our hand limit, which our hand limit didn't say it changes, so it's still four. All right, so there's our night vision binoculars, which is always nice. And hey, there you go. If punches into play area, draw a card. Yes. And an elbow strike. Cool. Good draw. Not bad at all. And now we have to avoid one of the... Uh, one of the obstacles, which on the near ones, so there's only one choice, so we're going to gain one suspicion no matter what. So there, that one's avoided, and then we uh, convey her over. So is this making sense for y'all watching at home? Oh, we have a new card that we haven't seen here. Act innocent. Lose two suspicion if it's in your, if it's in your deck whenever you play it. That's kind of nice. And scaffolding, uh, gain four. Four suspicion when it's eliminated. Four. And you can eliminate one nearby guard. Again, nearby being the whole... Four suspicion. Ay vey. That's nasty. All right. And another guard. There we go. Oh, good call. I missed that. The guard had the eliminate. Right. Which... Adds to our invisibility by one bing, which means our suspicion adds one. Good call. Thanks, Matt. That's why the peanut gallery is invaluable. All right, so new round. So what do we have? I would love to be able to grab that. Especially with we're going to need to avoid him, if at all possible. So I really would like to eliminate that, which means we need a total strength of seven. So let's see, one, two, three, four, doesn't look good for this round. So maybe if that's the case, we just try and avoid this one, which pushes this and it slows down where the guard goes. I think that's what we end up doing here. So we need a total of four. So first and foremost, we're going to go ahead and play our night vision binoculars. So that'll come down here, which means we gain one evasive every round so there's one of the four that we need to knock that down but we do need at least one strength one uh physical sorry uh man that's unfortunate because we already put our punch in there in hindsight oh well so that's a total of three And that's four. You know what? How many cards are left? So it's going to add one suspicion if we play that right hook. But the right hook is only going to be a one value card no matter what because of the fact that all our punches have been played and there's nothing we can do. So it makes sense. Let's go ahead and draw a card and cycle through to be able to get some of the stronger cards. So what do we draw? We draw a silent movement. We'll go ahead and get rid of that as well. So we'll play that there. All right, done. So we have plenty enough. So unfortunately, we only have one, two, three, four, five, six. One short. If that had been a two, we could have then potentially eliminated that. 
that's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So we're going to knock that out. Done. So now we're going to draw four cards. So all of these will get discarded, which gives us the chance to get the, uh, to get the right hook and punch back into our hand there. So we're going to take those two into our hand. We'll shuffle these bad boys up. That's funny. Voriz says, if you click on the little X on the back side of the card, will it close the card? <laughs> All right, three and four. So are you guys able to follow along? Is this making sense to y'all? So let's see, what do we got? We got our guard. That's just a two, I'm sorry, not a guard. It's an expandable baton. So that's a two value card or two strength. Two power. I will get the words right yet. That's four. Come on. One more two and we're, we're, we're home free. No, actually, we're... We're at seven, no matter what, because of the night vision binoculars. Oh, wow. That's a nice little combo, isn't it? That'll do, pig. That'll do. All right. So one of the obstacle cards is avoided. That one there. Slide, 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 and fill. And we have a deep breath. Or, I'm sorry, we have a reporting guard, which is a threat. When another guard is avoided, gain a suspicion. Oof. All right. Okay. So, here we go. So, if we want to target that, we have one. We need a total of seven. Two, four, five. We have to six and seven. So we can't discard it because to be able to lower our suspicion because we need it for the strength to be able to uh, take out the locker room or eliminate the locker room. So I think that's what we're going to do. And the nice thing here, and let me double check, is as soon as you take uh, clothing in, it says right here, when a new outfit is equipped, decrease your visibility by two. So that's going to be a total of seven. There is at least one physical, so it means we can eliminate it. So we'll eliminate it, and we will equip it immediately, which we're allowed to do. We get plus one here, uh, plus one uh, evasive every round when going up against a guard. That's awesome. And it drops our visibility by two. <sighs> that's a little bit better. All right. So, those get discarded. Unfortunately, now, when we have to avoid one of the obstacles, well, we only have one choice, so we're going to avoid her. So, that's going to be two there. And then, when a, another guard is avoided, gain one suspicion. So, that's actually plus one more. We're up to 11. Ouch. That's unfortunate. All right. So, we have there there. Remember, if he makes it there, game's over. We fail in our mission. No pressure. We'll see if that worked. Staff entrance doesn't hurt. And tech storage, when eliminated, increase the visibility by one. Oh, I should have drawn. I forgot. My bad. Two, three, and four. So we need a total of eight. So we have two, so we need a total of six. So we need at least two twos here, guys. All right. Not a good start. Okay. Well, if punch is in play, draw a card. So, so we need a total of six between all of our cards. That is not, 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 not good. All right, here we go, new round. So, we'll play punch for one. We'll play a right hook to draw a card. That's two, that's three, that's four. We're halfway home. That's five, that's six. This better be a two. Oh, looky there, what? All right.
There's four, there's six, there's seven, there's eight. That'll do. So we will eliminate him, which says whenever he's eliminated, gain an objective. Boom. And that eliminates one of the two mission failure connect, uh, conditions. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's more dramatic this way, Boris. My bad. All right. So there's that. And there is still a threat here that says when another guard is avoided. He's not avoided. Check that. And that's the wrong symbol anyways. Nope. Yeah, it's the wrong symbol. So never mind. So that's it. So these guys get discarded. We avoid the, uh, the scaffolding. So that's going to add to our suspicion level of one. Didn't, the threat wasn't affected. Eliminate and there's an oversight, which when he is avoided or it says, uh, gain one suspicion for every lightning bolt in sight, meaning anywhere out here. There we go. I, I keep forgetting to draw. I get so excited. So there's one, and now we shuffle up. We're at 12, right? Yeah, we're good. And now having to shuffle again, which means visibility will go up. There we go. Yeah, actually, that's that's pretty funny. That's actually the way that Amanda and I always kind of looked at solo games is we could play them cooperatively in a sense that kind of a two-headed two -headed solo. All right. So here we go. Here, oop. Let's try that again. Sorry about that, guys. All right, another punch. Clear path. Tension, which allows us to gain suspicion to draw a card, and can prep a card, which doesn't help us right now. All right? All right. So, add a suspicion for the shuffle. Nope, not suspicion. It's, it's visibility whenever you shuffle, guys. All right? Yes, Joshua, they will. They do. Am I wrong on that? Have I been cheating this whole time? All right, there we go, it's fixed, Rob. All right, so what do we got? We need another objective. There's nothing else that we can do until we can gain an objective, and right now, there are no other objectives available out there. So, what do we do? We kind of bide our time, right? Oh, hold on. Hold on. Not so fast, my friend. This does say, and where are we all on this one? And it said, place this, uh, okay. So here, when it's eliminated, I should have gained an objective. So that is the second objective. Already gained it. Hmm. Right there, see? Boom. So that's our second objective with the other guard. Easy game. So now we have to discard four evasive to leave the building. Which, oh, would you looky there. There's four. Yep. And, excuse me, boom, done. What? <laughs> All right, so we completed the, the, uh, the second stage. So, we're not going to go into the third stage, but this is what would happen. In the third stage, you would plus one to your hand size. So now your hand size is five. Awesome. But, let's go ahead and figure out what this is. All right? Here we go. Stage 2A, blend in. The building provided no clues about the whereabouts of Andrews, and the tension level is too high in the area to take someone aside for questioning. So you decide to head outside and explore further. You're about to leave the building when you notice a massive door with advanced security locks at the top of some nearby stairs. Someone must have left in a hurry because the door is not closed properly. Your blight sight 
cross-checks your GPS coordinates with the map information and confirms that this must be the personal office of the head of security. Might be something useful inside. You can hear no sound coming from within, so the office is likely empty. Taking into consideration how long you've already spent inside the complex and that every second matters. So, you have a choice. You either decide to head upstairs to the security office or push the door handle and move outside. There we go. So those are our two options and that would get us to either 3A or 3B. And that, folks, is Blight Chronicles Agent Decker, or at least two of the seven stages. And again, remember, we could have gone the other direction which is the blackout, which would have been 2B, but now we'll never know what 2B is because, well, we're not going to read it because we didn't do that. And that's where the replayability comes from because after you go 2A or 2B, then you have another branch, 3A, 3B, 4A, 4B, and it keeps branching. You can try different things. And that's also going to mean that there's going to be different setups like so here, right? To give you an example, and actually, here's another, so, so, depending on what direction you go, it might be different there, etc., etc., okay, that makes sense, so, oh, and here's the, the 2A to give you an idea as well, so they're all, and there's different decks, so there's different stuff, so the Brass Knuckles one here, so we didn't even see those, then we have looks like a security card symbol then we have a group of folk and then we have uh a, i don't know what that symbol is it looks like a computer with a a fire symbol so there we go so the point is there's a lot of different decks and a lot of different a actions this one's free to eliminate that 11 11 five cards hmm possibly more because you're going to get more as you go around uh no. Ha! 11. That's brutal. And really? Eight, fellas? Really? Eight suspicion. Really? That's, that's, in, that's insane. That's a lot. That's a big number. So there we go. All right. So that is Blake Chronicles. That was a cool hour and a half. That was fun. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, it seemed like you guys were enjoying it, reading along. Yeah, Boris says replayability comes from failing the stage three times and then finishing two in a row. Exactly that, right? Uh, I got to say, that was a lot of fun. And I like the, the clever decisions that you have to make as far as do you just take out a guard and not eliminate them to where it slows down the conveyor and you buy time uh, as long as you have enough uh, suspicion room to go ahead and play around with that. Uh, or you can just go and try and load up your deck with some of the higher value cards, or if they're lower value, the, the special abilities of them, and be able to chain those together. So I gotta say, overall, I dig it. It was pretty funny, because when Paul and I were talking, when Paul Grogan and I were talking about this, he was like, this doesn't at all seem like up your alley. It's a solo game. So I guess in theory, aren't solo cooperative in that you're playing cooperative with yourself? Or like what I had mentioned with me and Amanda, the idea of doing something like that, or, you know, with friends or whatever. I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed the solo experience. So I'm now, uh, I guess, three and two so far, or two and three in the game. And yeah, overall, really enjoyed it. That was a lot of fun. And I'm curious to see what all uh, comes out from the Kickstarter, anything else. Um, yeah, so there you go. Cool. So again, thank you everybody watching live uh, and hanging out for the afternoon. Thank you. Uh, for the fellas over at Board and Dice, thanks for sponsoring the playthrough. Thanks for the ability to show this off as well as the uh, the prototype. I'm looking forward to checking out the, uh, the finished product and we'll probably review it on the show when that time comes. So as Rob just linked to there, um, you can always uh, subscribe to us and like the video if you enjoyed it. We'd appreciate it. If you want to support the show, it's actually right there, pledgehc.com. We definitely uh, appreciate it. The 688 of y'all that do so, thank you very much. And yeah, again, I'm Edward, Heavy Cardboard. That was our first solo playthrough. That was a lot of fun. So uh, Matt and uh, Iraq, thanks for joining us from over at Board and Dice. Matt being the co-designer of this. Um, 
hopefully I did you guys proud. So that was a lot of fun. Thanks a lot. All right, y'all have a great rest of your day. And if you're here in the States, a quick rest of your work day. Take care, everybody.